Maths is about a lot of things, but it's definitely about questions. Take my fanfare sum copy from 5th class, 1989. Opening it triggers lots of memories of that primary school feeling, knee patches on trousers, sandwiches in the toilet bowl, and having indoor shoes if your desk was on the carpeted bit of the floor, but also all the questions in that little copy. The questions are the classic primary school sum questions, ones that reveal a little bit of what's on the country's mind at that time. Take question 4, February 17th, 1989. In 1988, there were 139 wet days in Ross Lair. How many more days were dry than wet? 1988 was a wet year, by the way. February 22nd. The railway fare is £2.80 for 20 miles. What is the fare for 36 miles? Now, I don't know if you've ever got a train here, but the answer to that could literally be anything. But also, it's a record of a different time. Question 20. 0 0.4 of a farm is pasture. 0 0.25 is barley, 0 0.15 is potatoes, and the remainder is sugar beet. If there are 24 acres under sugar beet, what is the size of the farm? And also, who's getting the farm in the will? Ah, simpler times when we grew food on a farm to eat. But maths, or indeed sums, was all about questions. Fast forward to secondary school, and it's the grey and the orange. New complete mathematics 1 and 2. I open up a random page to see what the questions are. F is a function defined on R, F colon X, slide E arrow, A X squared plus B X plus C. There are no memories of wet years in Ross Lair or potatoes and beet and songbirds. Just double maths after lunch with the radiators still on the winter setting. These questions are necessary in their own way. You have to eat your veg before you get your ice cream. But still, we need ice cream. I like the other questions two types of questions in particular. One I heard just this Monday morning on Maths Week TV. Susan Okereke was doing number patterns on her 100 number square for children all over the country, finding patterns with times tables up to 9, 10 and 11. And then, when she was done, there was time for questions. And a little boy asked, do the numbers go higher than 99? And you could see Susan's face light up because this is the question that Maths is asking all the time. Whether it's quantum dimensions curled inside a parallel universe or what's after 99, the question is, what's next? What happens if I keep going on the path I'm on? There's another type of question I like. It's the question where the person asking is not afraid to admit they just don't know. It happened this year in a big way, in a viral way. American teenager Gracie Cunningham posted a TikTok asking questions about maths, basically along the lines of, how do you even start coming up with algebra? How would you know how to go about it. How would you know you were right? She got abuse from people who thought her questions were simplistic and then praise from actual mathematicians because they weren't simplistic. They're the most fundamental questions you can ask. In fact, some mathematicians replied directly to Gracie. Hey Gracie, I know I don't look like it, but I actually have a doctorate in astrophysics and I'm currently a researcher at a university and I'm here to tell you that your questions were excellent questions and I have some answers that might help you. How do scientists or mathematicians know what they're looking for? Well, they define a problem. They have a problem and they want to solve it and they're going to do it with the power of maths. So, everyone in school gets asked lots of questions. They have to do sums, they have to do exams. But long after all of that, it's the questions we ask that are most important, whether it's about the price of something in that very tempting special offer, or the billions a politician is telling us they spent. The questions like, what happens next? And can you explain that for me again? 